Hi everybody, so this is an example of pityriasis or tinea versicola, which is a type of superficial cutaneous fungal infection. And this biopsy was taken from a one to two centimeter plaque from the abdomen of a young adult, which was slightly hyperpigmented and the clinician actually wondered whether it might have been a kind of flat seborrheic wart um, and so took this punch biopsy from it and on the low power there's not immediately an awful lot going on perhaps a little bit of very sparse superficial perivascular lymphocytic inflammation visible there on this low power but nothing that looks particularly like an epidermal lesion like a seborrheic keratosis and as we go a little bit closer Again, all we're seeing is just some very sparse perivascular lymphocytic inflammation here. So it's one of these <clears throat> scenarios where there's very little to see, almost like what we call an invisible dermatosis, where there are various things you should think about, uh, things that may not be immediately apparent. And it's always important to go through the specimen layer by layer. And if we go first to the superficial keratin layer, then we see the diagnostic finding becomes apparent. Obviously, if you don't look and ignore the keratin layer, you might easily miss it. But even on the H&E, you can just start to make out that inside this basket weave keratin, we've actually got what looks like um, numerous fungal structures, which include what look like yeast spore forms and also longer hyphal forms as well. And this is really quite typical of what we see in pityriasis versicola. So it tends to be quite abundant um, spores and hyphae within the surface keratin and actually very little in the way of an inflammatory reaction in the underlying skin. And it can be helpful to uh, highlight those with a suitable fungal stain, PAS stain here, just to help highlight the presence of those fungal elements. Here we can see them better highlighted here. And this is fairly typical of what we see in Pityriasis versicola. Abundant organisms and the so-called spaghetti and meatball appearance with a combination of the spores of the Malassezia fungus, which are the meatballs mixed in with the longer hyphae, which represent the spaghetti. And usually there are many, many fungal elements to be seen in, in the keratin. So fairly typical appearances there of pityriasis or tinea versicola. In terms of other superficial types of cutaneous fungal infections that we commonly see, they do tend to have slightly distinctive appearances. So other types of common superficial dermatophyte infections, they tend not to have quite so many fungal organisms present in the keratin, they usually tend to be a bit sparser. And in those you tend to see fungal hyphae, but not any spores. And the hyphae tend to be arranged um, in a rather um, parallel arrangement to the epidermis. And usually we see a more obvious inflammatory reaction in dermatophytoses, typically with neutrophils in the epidermis and also within the keratin layer as a clue to the presence of the fungal infection. Another common type of fungal infection we see, particularly in um, genital or mucosal sites, is candidiasis. Um, and again, in that, with chronic candidiasis, often you get more of a psoriasiform type of reaction pattern. So uh, hyperplasia of the epidermis with surface parakeratosis and again, neutrophils. And the fungal elements in candidiasis, again, often slightly sparser than what we see in pityriasis versicolor. And the uh, orientation of the hyphae in candida, very often in that, the hyphae tend to be uh, arranged more vertically or perpendicular to the, to the epidermis within the keratin. And sometimes you can even see the uh, fungal hyphae extending into the epidermis itself in cases of candidiasis. But this was a nice example of pityriasis or tinea versicolor.